Hey, what's up guys? Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center again today, and we're going to talk about pyramiding in tortoise shells. Now, before we get into that, right in this bottom corner, right down there, is our subscriber button. Make sure you hit that. We appreciate you doing so and following along week after week after week. Now, let's get right into this. Okay, so let's talk about tortoises for a second. Wonderful animals. They make amazingly great pets, and they are generally pretty easy to keep, of course, like any other time I've ever said, as long as the habitat and the basic needs are given. With these guys right here, however, there is a problem that occurs quite often in captivity that's called pyramiding. What that is, is the raising of the shell on the top, the raising of the carapace at the scutes. You have the plastron is the bottom shell, the carapace is the top shell, and on top of the carapace is individual platelets or scutes. Now, generally speaking, when you have pyramiding happen, one of two things happens. Either too much protein in the diet or not enough calcium and UV exposure. Essentially, think about it this way. When it's given too much protein or not enough calcium, parts of the shell grows faster than the rest of the shell can keep up. When a tortoise grows, the shell grows with it. Now, if it's being kept correctly and with the right diet, everything grows uniform. It all grows at the same time. But in our ecosystem, and a lot of the times in captivity, the things that we tend to typically feed the tortoises will cause the extra protein intake, which causes the parts of the shell to grow faster than the rest of the shell can keep up, hence pyramiding. Now, some people will say this is detrimental to the tortoise. It is not, okay? It is not good for them. It's not a good thing. It means there's something lacking or there's too much of something with inside of their diet, but it is not detrimental and it's not life-threatening unless it becomes a long-term issue. Then it can shorten the lifespan of your tortoise. Let's talk a little bit about some of the things that go on that can cause too much of this pyramiding. Let's start with diet. When we're in our ecosystem, we have things that are super wet, kind of like this apple. We have things, the vegetation and fruits that are super wet, but they're also a lot higher in protein than what these guys would be used to in the wild. So understand, things like green beans, green peas, sugar snap peas, broccoli, spinach, a lot of that kind of vegetables is super high in protein complex. So if they get too much of that, it will cause things to grow much faster than everything else can keep up, essentially. Now, another problem that you have, of course, is when it comes to the proper UV exposure and proper calcium intake. Making sure you have the right kind of light Mercury vapor bulbs do fantastic. They're great for most all reptiles. They're much better than the store-bought garbage UVB bulbs, whether it's tubed like a shop light or whether it's curly uh, like an energy saver bulb. All of them are garbage in, in a sense. They're trashy little bulbs. They don't last very long, and their penetration depth is not very deep. 12 inches or less to the bulb is the, most effe is a, the effective range of those bulbs. Mercury vapor penetrates much deeper, goes much further inside of a habitat, lasts much longer, and it's closer to natural sunlight than any of the other bulbs are. So when they start getting the right kind of calcium with the VD supplement, okay, calcium and vitamin supplement, and the right kind of diet, now that doesn't mean that you can't give no protein at all because some people think that absolutely no protein at all. No, everything still has to have a little amount of protein. There has to be protein in a diet but it's the excessive amount of protein that causes this problem or is a partial cause in this kind of problem right here, which is the pyramiding. Now, fortunately, at the age that this little guy is right here, it is super correctable, okay? So if you start giving this, for example, this little tortoise, the right kind of UV exposure or even natural sunlight exposure, start getting it on the right kind of diet, not really super high protein stuff, and giving a little bit of the protein vegetables just every now and then, making sure there's some protein going inside of the diet, this shell can correct beautifully. She still has plenty of growth time, so that means it can start growing naturally and start smoothing out. I've seen that happen many, many times. Unfortunately, just in captivity, 
most of the time people just don't do enough research and so they just start feeding pretty much anything and everything they're like oh you can eat fruits and vegetables here here's lettuce and here's which of course lettuce is horrible there's nothing nutrition to it anyways but they'll start feeding lettuce and uh and a lot of the times apples or strawberries or something along that line so when it comes to diet, we want to make sure that we're giving the absolute correct diet. A good balanced diet, as I've always talked about, is incredibly important. Making sure that you have a variety of, of different vitamins, minerals, nutrients. Making sure you have the right kind of calcium and UV exposure. And stuff like this will not happen. So again, make sure that you're not just feeding the same things over and over and over and over and over again. I mean, that's what a lot of people tend to do. Whatever's the cheapest and hey, it works. Again, and at the same time, as you see like in this video right here from this other sulcata that we have, it's eating the grasses. Also give it outside time. Give it outside time in the natural sunlight. Allow it to graze on the grass. Kentucky bluegrass, uh, think different haze and grasses like sweet grass, fescue. Just do nothing, no alfalfa. There's too much protein involved in that one as well. And again, remember, you need protein. There, Everything has to have protein, but too much can be a bad thing, just like too little can be a bad thing. And generally speaking, when there's this going on, you also have a almost guaranteed fact a lack of proper UV exposure and calcium exposure. All right? Now, this is Chad, and this is the cute little girl, Sokata. We are the Reptile Rangers here at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center. Make sure to write in. Let us know of other things you want us to film about. Our information will be in the description below for those needing to get in touch with us. People get in touch with us all the time asking us questions and, and for help. Don't forget about the TikTok channel entitled Reptile Rangers as well. Also, you can check us out on Instagram at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo. Don't forget, we do sell pets all the time. If you're looking for a reptilian pet, feel free to come by and see us or give us a call. Now, again, we appreciate you following along and coming along with us. We'll either see you here at the zoo or we'll see you on the next episode. Later.